humans, it's just Martine and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is the last week of September, which is crazy crazy. I have so much that I want to read. So it's Monday, 2.30 p.m. and I'm working. I'm like flipping back and forth between YouTube stuff and school stuff, but I have already done some reading this morning. Hopefully I'll get some more reading done tonight post Zumba, but we'll just have to see where the week takes us regardless it's going to be an interesting one, so stick around. Hello, happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday afternoon and last night I finished a book. I finished reading The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. This is my second Rachel Hawkins book. I liked this one better than the first Rachel Hawkins I read, which was Reckless Girls. I'm giving this one 3.5 stars. For most of it, it was feeling like a four star and then she made a decision and so it's 3.5. I just think this should have ended like two chapters sooner than it did because the reveal in the last two chapters, I was like, come on. But in this one, we're following technically two timelines. In one, we're following this woman and her life is kind of like a mess right now. She's going through a divorce. She's behind on her book that's due. And so her best friend drags her for a six week trip that she's like, we'll sit down, we'll write together because she also has a book due. So it's kind of like a writing retreat in a villa in Italy. Then we're also following a timeline of a writer years and years before who went to that villa and made the villa famous because there was a death in that villa. And so we're finding out what happened then and also what's happening now. Yeah, I found the characters very interesting in this. I was like invested. It's not a scary type of mystery thriller book. If anything, it felt really good because it captured, I feel like, that feeling of Italian summer, even though I've never been to Italy in, in the summer. So like, what do I know? But the atmosphere in this kind of on par with Call Me By Your Name, which is also set in Italy in the summertime. So like, it gave Italian summertime vibes, which I really appreciated and made this just like a really enjoyable read. Pretty good book, except those last like two chapters, but. The dreaded Wednesday slump has indeed arrived. I'm going to leave for dinner in a few minutes, but I did just want to quickly tell you about the book that I finished this morning, which was This Is How You Lose the Time War. This was actually a gift from the other students in my program for my birthday last year, so I figured why not get to it? <laughs> How do you describe it? It's a sapphic sci-fi book. It's technically about these two agents. They're on opposing sides of a war like through and across time, and they start corresponding in like really weird ways. Every time they described like how they would write a letter, it was insane. They would leave it in like the seed of a plant or like the sting of a bee or something, something just insane. <laughs> there are books that are confusing to me and that ends up being the reason I dislike them. And then there are books that are confusing to me. And in spite of that, I find something beautiful about them. This book is that second type of book. There were points that I was extremely confused, but the writing was beautiful. I still cared about the characters and what happened to them. And it did all come together in the end in a crazy way. Like for most of the book, I was sitting there going like, why does that keep happening? But by the end, I got it, which I loved. So I'm giving this four stars, really great time. The use of language, crazy. The characters, simple, and yet in their simplicity, really complex. Like it just, it was a good time. I'm glad to have this book. So something good happened this Wednesday. Now that we're caught up on what I have already read this week, we need to talk about the rest of the plan because today is October 27th, which means I have three days in one evening, basically, to get any reading done that I want for the month out of the way. And normally that wouldn't be an issue for me because I roll over books like crazy. But because of next month, I have books I want to finish. Right now I have four books that I need to finish before October starts. Two of them are for a NetGalley vlog, so there's that. And then I have Queen of Air and Darkness and Legendborn. A little fantasy heavy now that I'm thinking about it, but we're gonna get it done. I've already made substantial progress on both of those books and also the Night Galley books, but mainly <laughs> those two books. And we just, we need to finish them. By the end of Saturday, they need to be done. So that's the mission. I hope it doesn't rain on me. <laughs> books. I've read them. It's Friday and last night I finished reading Legendborn by Tracy Dion which I'm giving it three stars. It was a rough start. Wanted to DNF for the first 30%. Around 50% I started to get interested and invested in the story. It still had its flaws to me but overall I found it to be like a pretty fun time and the ending was 
crazy. If you want more in-depth thoughts about it, it was the Shelf This pick for the month of September. I'll try to remember to link the live show, but it's on Bailey's channel from Is Bailey Reading. Legendborn is about this girl who is going to early college at UNC. Her mother has recently passed away and she's dealing with a bunch of grief and then suddenly she gets there and she starts seeing magical stuff and things go crazy crazy from there. It's based on Arthurian legend. It's got lots of discussions of race and privilege, especially in like university settings. By the end I really enjoyed my time reading it. Then this morning I finished listening to the audiobook for Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare and I'm giving it four stars, making it my favorite in that trilogy. In this particular trilogy we're following the Shadowhunters in the Los Angeles Institute shortly after the events of the original Shadowhunters series. A lot of the original cast of characters is still there, but they're not the main characters in this trilogy. Instead, we're following Emma Carstairs and Julian Blackthorne, a bunch of other people. Ty and Kit stole my heart. They were my favorites along with Kieran, Christina, and Mark. Glad to finally be done with that trilogy because it was one of my least favorite Shadowhunters series, even though I ended up really enjoying the last book. Somehow I did the thing. Like, I finished all the books that I meant to finish before October. Go me! And so ends another week of reading. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. Do you finish all the books you're in the middle of or do you roll some over to the next month and subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!